So I'm getting ready to do something really, really fun. I've wanted to come down to Nevada and do one of these guzzler volunteer projects. So I found out they were doing one here in southern Nevada about an hour outside of Vegas. And I called the Matt Maples, the guy from Nevada Division of Wildlife, and said, hey Matt, can I come on down? He said, yeah, bring your camera, come down. So that's what we're doing today. We're kind of scoping it out, trying to figure out, all right, can we get everybody in there? What's the, the situation as far as landing the helicopter? Because this is such a remote location, we have to do it by helicopter. Matt told me normally they don't do it by helicopter, but this one, there's really no way to get where these sheep need water via a uh, vehicle. So there's a little landing pad there and they're flying all the materials in, they're doing that today. And then tomorrow, I think they expect 40 or 50 volunteers to show up and they're gonna fly them in by helicopter, so follow along. Today we had uh, 45 to 50 volunteers come out building critical water developments so that the bighorn sheep have have precious water uh, that's stored for them during the monsoon season for uh, the drought periods when they really need water. Uh, the fraternity has constructed over 125 water developments um, in uh, the last 54 years uh, with a total storage capacity of about 860,000 gallons of precious precipitation rainwater that's stored for bighorn sheep and another 67 other wildlife species. I can tell you that the volunteers in the state of Nevada are second to none. An incredible group of people that come out, drive their own vehicles, uh, sometimes out to remote locations, uh, enjoy each other's company, uh, and join together on conservation projects uh, that are very meaningful for bighorn sheep recovery. Uh, Nevada would be a different place, especially for sportsmen and for wildlife without the water development program. We've seen a lot of changes, especially recently with habitat conversion and increasing pressures on natural water sources from a variety of threats to wildlife. And so a, a lot of these early guzzlers for bighorn sheep were put in to expand the range of, of desert bighorn. They're wildly successful at that. Uh, we went from very, very low populations to now, you know, historic modern day highs of, of 10,000 plus bighorn sheep in Nevada. And so it's been instrumental in, in moving that recovery project along. Um, a lot of our sites now, we site in locations where natural water sources may be impaired or be um, under competition through a variety of other uses and so we can augment natural water sources with these artificial sites and allow wildlife uh, kind of a secluded and their own place to come and get a drink. There are very few organizations out there like the Wild Sheep Foundation. Uh, we have chapter and affiliates in, in every western jurisdiction who, uh, who uh, are responsible for putting water on the landscape where historically uh, it was there and today it might be missing uh, for a variety of reasons. For example, the fraternity uh, for over 50 years uh, has been responsible uh, for helping to restore and manage uh, wild sheep. Uh, they've built well over 120 or so uh, water developments for a combined water storage capacity of nearly a million gallons. The, the Wild Sheep Foundation uh, raises money every year uh, that, that goes towards the conservation programs throughout Western jurisdictions, uh, throughout North America. And each year we raise millions that we give back to uh, the various uh, wildlife jurisdictions for uh, wild sheep conservation. And no other organization does that, puts that, that level of funding to work on the ground to, to uh, put and keep wild sheep on the mountain. 
one of the most important things I'd like to say is just that is just given the Fraternity of the Desert Bighorn and NBU and all of our other volunteers and sportsmen's organizations a big pat on the back. They deserve a ton of credit. They show up time and again in conditions that aren't always favorable or fun to work in. Uh, they provide us funding and you know without our volunteers this program wouldn't exist in the fashion that it does. Uh, we have a large capacity. Um, it's a well-funded program. We're going in, in good directions and largely uh, it's, it's on the backs of those sportsmen's volunteers that just pay us tremendous amounts of support year in and year out. Think about the fact that in the lower 48, the odds of drawing a sheep tag on any year are less than 1%. So I asked some of these people, why, why would you come do this? You, you know, the odds are you're not gonna draw a sheep tag. And most of them said it's because that's what I do. I'm, I'm into conservation. I'm, in, I'm into doing things for the landscape and the wild things that live there. And that's, that makes me smile. To me, that is the core of why I'm a conservationist. It's what makes me a hunter. This is conservation in action. This is proof that hunting is conservation. You have volunteers out on the public lands doing things on their day off, not because they're getting paid, but because they love wild things and wild places, and they're gonna do what they can. They're gonna take the extra step to make sure that these, in this case, wild sheep have a bright future.